Course Web to Sakai in four easy steps. This is advanced, taking it to the next level. Today, we'll do three things. We'll show you how to hide menu items, create a tiny URL, and if you want, even a class list serve. Remember before we had the following. We're going to go to page order. It's in site info, and we're going to start hiding things from the participants or students. So the little light bulb icon, when you click it, it turns blue. It's turned off. Click save. And you'll notice that your menu hasn't changed, right? But if you go over to the very right-hand corner, you should view site as student. And there you'll see that the student has two options, home and help, as well as going to the course website. So we'll return back. And now what we're going to do is create a tiny URL, a small URL, for the first page of our course website. So if you'll recall, we go into the page and edit details. And if you scroll down the page, you'll see the web address, the URL. You can select it for copying. You can go to edit in your browser to copy or use control C. And then you're going to go to tinyurl.com. You're going to enter that long URL you can paste from your browser or control V. And then you can either make it tiny or you can see if there's a uh, string of characters that you'd like to have custom for your site. So we're going to pick UNC Biology 101 Summer Session 2, S2. And that's available, so we get to um, create that. We're going to copy it, and we can see what it looks like if we launch in a new window. There's our website that we've been working on. So that tiny URL works, and we're going to copy it, and we're going to save it in our Sakai site so that we don't lose it in email or on our desktop or somewhere else. So let's return to resources. We're going to refresh. Now, we're just going to add an HTML page. We could create a text page, but we're just going to create an HTML page, and we'll say the course tiny URL equals, and we'll paste what we just copied. And that's all we need to do, and we can just save that. And this is really just for our own purposes. Students won't see this. Just give it a name. I'm going to call it tiny URL, and then finish. And so again, there's my tiny URL HTML page. It's just stored in my resources, and anytime I need to, I can copy and send that to other people as needed. But at least I've got it backed up. And of course, it takes me back to my site. All right, now the last thing that you may want to do, if you're using Sakai, your students are going to be automatically added, and if you want to, you can send email right from Sakai. So you could use the Messages tool if you email students individually, or you can use Email Archive as a class listserv. So you can give it a name for your course, and what it's going to do is just create an alias for all of the people in your course. You are able to send from your email program a message to all the students in the class with one click. So here's what it looks like. These are the permissions so that the instructor can do everything and the student is able to read. You can change those, of course, by clicking the options. So we click on Biology 101, and here comes my email client. I'm just testing. Uh, of course, i got to log in. And I'm going to hit Send. And then when I refresh the email archive, you know, give it a minute or two, but there's my note. And so what this tool does is stores all the messages that you send via this tool in your site. So you can even delete them in your own email because you know they're saved in the site. And then students can reply back directly to you. And there you have it. Do you remember how to hide email archive from the participants? You go to site info and page order, turn off that light bulb. I'm going to move it up. I want my menu to uh, have that at the top. Click save. And when I click home, there it is. That's my site. And here's what the student will see. Very simple for the students. Just go right to the site. And that's it. You've done it. That's the advanced video. Congratulations.